Hello, my name is Leonardo Kimura and I am a master student at University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I am going to present you Amazon Biobank, a collaborative genetic database for bioeconomy development. This work was supported by the CNPq and by the Ripple Impact and coordinated by my advisor Marcos A. Simplicio Jr. So a little introduction about the Amazon rainforest. The Amazon rainforest is the forest with the largest biodiversity in the world with an immense economical potential. So, for example, we have the acai that was used to produce food, cosmetic, medicine, and supplement. And we have a lot of medicinal valuable herbs like chicoria, jabaranti, and others that can be used to produce medicines for hepatitis, diarrhea, fever, bone healing, and uh, even cancer. So this industry of billions of dollars uh, generate a uh, much richness to the Amazon rainforest region. But a common question is how to use this richness, um, particularly how to use this richness to promote the local development of these regions. Because even if the acai and the other plants generates a lot of richness, a lot of money, a lot of profit, those benefits, those profits are not shared with the community, to the local community, like the indigenous and the traditional community members. So those regions continue poor and while the companies, the research companies generate profit from those products, from those biodiversity. We call this benefit sharing and this is one of the goals of our project. A little more about the biotechnological research, uh, we have the genetical database that are key for the biotechnological research in, in the field. Those genetical databases are databases that store DNA sequences so that they can identify desired substances to produce medicine, to produce cosmetic and others. Some examples of those biobanks are the maintained by the NCBE and those maintained by the EBE, European Bioinformatics Institute. Some challenges about those databases is that are that they, they lack of benefit sharing. So even if the community member insert a DNA data of those databases and a company use this DNA data to generate profits, medicine, cosmetic and other products, uh, those profits are not transferred back for the local community members. Uh, so they lack of benefit sharing and thus they lack for incentive for new data because those community members doesn't are are not encouraged for inserting the new data of the system. Uh, that is a pity because those community members are people that have easier access to, to DNA data and to knowledge because they live on the area while the research companies uh, usually need to organize an expedition to go to the forest and to extract the desired substances. This lack of incentive for new data generate a lack of variety of the data and so many species on the Amazon rainforest that could be on those databases are not present. So the objectives of our project is Amazon Biobank community-based genetic database to support bioeconomy development. Specifically, we implemented fair benefit sharing both for DNA data and traditional knowledge. We have also implemented the traceability and auditability requirements so that we can uh, research, we can trace back who is the owner of the DNA data and who uses it this DNA data to develop some products. We have also a requirement of scalability because the DNA data typically are very large, uh, ranging from 100 to gigabytes until terabytes of five size. Thus, we aim to achieve some benefits 
for better incentive for inserting new data, especially for local community members, and thus we have a larger variety of DNA, uh, improving and supporting the biotechnological research. We have a multidisciplinary teams, so we have a lot of engineer and technical team, uh, some professors, some graduate and undergraduate students. Uh, we have professor from biology, we have professor from economy, and we have professor supporting the law size. So it is a very multidisciplinary team and a very large project. Background. So blockchain. Blockchain is adequate to transact digital assets, for example, Bitcoin, XRP, NFT, and others. And we can use this technology to transact DNA data also, because DNA can be hashed and can be transferred like any other digital assets. Thus, the blockchain can be used as a transparent and reliable data log. So we can trace the DNA, both DNA and traditional knowledge transaction, uh, to know who bought the DNA, who inserted the DNA, when this was inserted, and how it was used. And this data log is public, and anyone can audit, and anyone can confer if verify if the data was used or not. Uh, we have also implemented smart contracts that provides fair sharing of economical benefits. So we automatically, using smart contract, we transfer the benefits, the profits from the, from the products, from the companies, to the data owners. We have two kinds of blockchain, uh, permissioned blockchain, non-permissioned blockchain, that are open and anyone can participate, that are open and anyone can participate, and we have the permissioned blockchain uh, that we use in our project that the federation controls the participation. Why we use it? Uh, because it provides better control about the privacy and the legal actions and we can have misconduct punishment because on the permissioned blockchain we can know who are the user and which action they are doing, they are performing. So if any user uh, makes a misconduct, makes insert false data, for example, we can detect it and we can punish it so to, uh, so to provide a better integrity in our system. Also, a permissioned blockchain achieves a better scalability, so we can store, uh, we can store a lot of transactions per second and we can use a better consensus mechanisms and a better more scalable consensus mechanism and we have also independent auditors that verify and monitor the action of those federations so even if the federation colludes to to make some misconduct to alter to modify the history of the blockchain those independent auditors can detect those misconduct. This provides a zero trust, uh, zero trust property in our system. We have also the BitTorrent technology because that provides a P2P data sharing technology. That happens because the DNA sequences are large amount of data and they cannot be stored directly on the blockchain. Thus, we use BitTorrent to to store the DNA sequences and use only the hash, only the magnetic link to that reference to this data and register this data, this link on the blockchain. Also, using the those hash, we can achieve uh, data integrity in our torrent file. And the to BitTorrent technology uses its discovery using DHT distributed hash table. Uh, another property of BitTorrent is that any user can contribute it with storage and bandwidth. So if a user with a commodity computer can desire to participate on the network, they can contribute it, storing maybe 100 gigabytes or even less 
to the network helping to distribute the DNA data that that provides a highly scalable and low cost network and data are encrypted before storage. Also in our system we seek to reward those distributors that provide storage and bandwidth. So we provided also a micropayment reward for all distributors that help it with storage and bandwidth to the DNA data to our system. So about the Amazon Biobank, some main players and operations. This is an overview of the main players. So we have both collectors and traditional knowledge writers that are the originators that generate the DNA data. So the collectors use those uh, PCR equipment to extract the DNA from the environment. And we have also some community that can that can provide some useful information about the data, like you know, how to how to better use these substances or how to extract these substances from the nature. So we have those generators, they insert the data on the system, and we have the processors that process the data, uh, the raw DNA data that are generated from the PCR to the for the processed DNA data. We have also validators and curators that validate the operation done by before by those players. And we have also the buyer that effectively pays some bio coins, our internal currency, and distributed these payments to other participants on the chain and use this DNA data to generate some biotechnological products. We have also the blockchain that are maintained by the Federation. Uh, this federation can be composed by the governmental or non-governmental organization and from some universities, for example, uh, USP, University of Sao Paulo. We have also those another network, B2P network, that are composed by the distributors that, uh, that provide the storage capacities to the system. So a little more details about the data, about the operation. Uh, we have the collector traditional writers that generate the data and insert also a plain meta metadata about the DNA, like species, place where these species were collected and when it was collected, and a detail that those data are encrypted before inserted in our system. So we have also a decryption key that must be managed and provided for those who are buying this DNA data. They have two options, they can keep the key to themselves if they do not uh, trust on the federation, but they can also share this key with the federation uh, so they can have better usability and the federation is responsible for providing this decryption key to the buyer when uh, the buyer pays the necessary amount of bio coins. Uh, the collector also regulates the payment distribution between all the players on the chain. We have also the distributed distribution of DNA sequences by the distributors, like we said, and also every time that a distributor uh, down that a downloader downloads. Uh, DNA data from another distributors, they themselves can become a uh, distributor also, paying some bio coins to download the data and receiving some bio coins for sharing this data to other participants. We have also the processing and validating uh, operation uh, that processes a raw DNA data that are generated by those PCR equipments and makes computed intensive task processing, so provides a uh, processed DNA and processed and more useful DNA data. Of course, those validators and processors are also rewarded with bio coins according to the smart contract. An uh, issue that can happen is a possi possible redundancy. Uh, in other words, that two processors can process the same data simultaneously so that we can we does not 
lose the processing operation of the second processor. Later, proce first processor can, is an official processor, and later processor can act as a validator of the first processing. So uh, vali the validators uh, monitor if the processing operation was done correctly, and if they detect that this processing operation is not done correctly, they can kick out this processor and become themselves a uh, themselves a uh, processor. We have also purchasing access rights to the data. Uh, so we have also the buyers that buys the decryption key and downloads the data to make some research. Uh, those thus all the entities are remunerated according to the smart contract and those purchase is registered in the blockchain and processed by smart contract here okay for the traceability and auditability process uh, purpose so some remaining challenges uh, how to ensure the correctness of the inserted data that can happen from both for dna data that people can insert false DNA data, uh, uh, random DNA data. We have also the metadata that to, uh, to fill out uh, correct species, correct date from the collect extraction of the data and the DNA processing operation. So how we can ensure this correctness? So we have some players, like you said, the validators and curators that independently validate with the results we have also the reputational system and misbehavior punishment to enforce those validations from those correctors and because it is a permissioned system uh, if a user makes uh, keep inserting false dna data they can be punished and eventually evicted from the system another issue is how to deal with data outside of the blockchain uh, for example, if a buyer shares a decryption key outside of the blockchain or if a company does not register its profits to the our system so they they do not share their profits on the royalties and payments. So in our system we encourage use, users to use and reference Amazon Biobank for a series of benefits for example for data traceability important for research because research needs to provide needs to explain where they did get the dna data um, and about the benefit of the marketing for example companies uh, worried about the esg oriented policies uh, they can use the amazon biobank traceability so they can use it on marketing campaigns like they are supporting the forest biodiversity and supporting the forest conservation or sustainable exploration. Also, in addition, uh, Amazon Biobank traceability can be used for resolving disputes. For example, if a company does not uh, register its profit in our system, we can use the traceability to prove that that company uh, has indeed used this DNA data from our system uh, because all the operation and all the purchase and all the downloads can be traced uh, according to our system. So in conclusion, Amazon Biobank is a community-based genetic database that encourages users to collaborate with data, knowledge, and computational resources, have a high traceability and auditability, and high scalability, thus less trust dependent of any particular player or entities. We have also implemented a working prototype with the entire cycle of genetic data, uh, including collection of data, registration, processing, and purchase. And as a next step, we plan to deploy a prototype in collaboration with Amazon 4.0 institution with target community members. Thus, we expect that Amazon Biobank can contribute to sustainable development uh, of the region through biodiversity research. So thank you very much.